Hey everybody, today is June 10th, it's a Thursday. I'm not doing a day in the life today, I'm just gonna do an update on two things, two main things. How our closing went, our trip to Denver to close on our house, and Loki. We're about to fly to Denver to close on our house and then we got some news about our 10 year old cat Loki being in kidney failure, not quite kidney failure, but having really low kidney function is decreasing rapidly and he was going to go in for an ultrasound well we have all that information so it has been a very bittersweet last few days very exciting and very stressful and I thought I would maybe start it with the fun part while I'm on my a.m. walk it's almost noon but I'm counting it as an a.m. walk because it is still 11 ish a.m. Basically multitasking. <laughs> but yeah, we closed on our house on Monday. Colorado, they do a table close. And for our agent, it was the first time she had done a table close since COVID because people were finally allowed to be in the room together. So it was Jesse and I and our agent and our lender, our sellers and their agent. And then the dude, the notary guy from the title company, who kind of looked like George R. R. Martin. It was, he was very fun. We no longer own our Napa home. We are renting it back until we leave next, in about a month. In a month, we will be in Denver, settled into our hotel for another, what, six days or so before we get possession of our new house. Sorry, there's a lot of noise here. I probably shouldn't be doing this, but... I wanted to model, but I am walking. <laughs> we are the owners of our home in Colorado, which our sellers are renting back from us until mid-July. We've also ordered our new couch and then double-checked measurements in Colorado at our new house to make sure it would fit, and it will. To walk up the hill to give a little bit of space when somebody is running by. They say how polite people are during a pandemic. I mean, there's also a bunch of people who are total jerk faces, but I have noticed there's been a lot of people being super friendly and polite. Our sellers are awesome. We spent some time talking to them when we were there for our final walkthrough. We were introduced to one of our neighbors and they told us all about the other neighbors. Seems like it's a really great neighborhood to be a part of, which I'm very excited about. We did some exploring to figure out, you know, some places that might be good for shopping when we're there. There's a Costco, very close, which I'm excited about. Drove by the kids' new high school. We went to the Hello Fancy shopping place downtown. We had a reservation there at, uh, there's a steakhouse. It's called 801 Chop House, it's fancy. Our realtor suggested that we go for happy hour because the wines by the glass are half off and there's some really good appetizers and oh my God, she was not wrong. They had sirloin tips in like this garlic mashed potatoes, oh my God. And little filet mignon sliders, Woo. And lobster mac and cheese. Just had appetizers. <laughs> and we both thought we were gonna get like rolled back to the hotel. Very good. There's also a container store. There is a container store within 15, 20 minutes of our new house, which is both magical for me and terrible for me. You go to some stores, and you're used to them, you can resist, right? I'm pretty good at resisting in Michaels, right? I go to Michaels so often <laughs> that although there's so many things there that I would absolutely love, I'm basically desensitized to Michaels at this point. The container store, I may, maybe I'll be desensitized eventually, but I'm a container hoarder and I'm getting rid of a lot of my containers to make room for the move. That's just gonna give me the excuse to go and buy more containers. Of course, I don't wanna buy them off the containers because that place is fucking expensive, but it's like aspirational containers, right? The other store that's like that, which is also aspirational because I probably couldn't afford to buy a fork there is Williams Sonoma. And there's one of those in that same shopping center. Aspirational, I tell you. So we were able to get a lot of pictures of the new house measurements, even though it still has all the seller's stuff in it. It felt like home. Like it felt like home. We walked in, I was worried that maybe we over blew it in our mind because we'd only been in it the one time. And then we just spent all this time staring at pictures of it. No, it felt like home. And our sellers were doing everything that they could to make us feel that way. So 
I appreciate them for that. They did a great job. So now we're just going into the uh, last less than four weeks before we load up and start our road trip to Denver with the cats. Flights were fine, crowded, and I swear to God, our flight back to Oakland, I thought I was going through the change. I was so hot, so miserable. Thought I was gonna puke. Jesse said that he, uh, that he saw other people reacting the same way I was and that they announced over the intercom that yes, the air conditioning was on. I didn't hear it because I had my headphones in because I was trying to watch a movie and distract myself from the puking. So I didn't puke though, so yay. I gotta order our Starbucks. I'm within walking distance. But before I do, I will say, I did watch two movies on the plane, one on the way there, one on the way back. One was Wonder Woman 1984, which was fun. I thought that as much as I love Pedro Pascal, I thought his plot line could have easily been just like taken out and they could have just focused on Wonder Woman and Barbara Minerva because Kristen Wiig was an inspired casting choice. So it was okay. The movie I watched on the way there though that I thought was outstanding was Promising Young Woman, the one that was directed by Emerald Fennell, the chick who plays Cam Camilla Parker Bowles on The Crown with Carrie Mulligan in it about a girl who is taking revenge on dudes for being sleazy basically because her friend was raped and nobody believed her. It's a lot more complicated than that. It's kind of like a black comedy slash thriller and I 10 out of 10 recommend it. Everybody in it is dislikable, including the main character, but it's Brad. Anyway, I'm gonna stop this for a minute and order my Starbucks and then probably wait to update you on Loki till I get home. I have been enjoying this talk about the house, but the Loki stuff is a little sadder, so. I might want to sit down for that. And there he is. There's a kitty kitty. Hi, dude. Hi. You gonna join me while I talk about you? You gonna join me? I'm sweaty and I'm tired and I have my strawberry acai drink that I will drink when I'm done with this. I'm not gonna linger too long on this subject because it's a sad one, but it's also, you know, it's part of life, right? Right, Loki man? Right, my Loki meow meow? Oh, hi, buddy. Let me see if I can just set this down. Yeah, I'm gonna do this instead. <laughs> so, okay, so here's the story with Loki. When I last updated you, we told you that we had to bring him in for an ultrasound to see what was going on because his kidney function had dropped dramatically in the two, two months between when we had gotten blood work done. And we would never have noticed. He had, He's lost a little bit of weight and his appetite has gone down. But other than that, he's like been super healthy acting, his coat is super glossy, and like he's he's always presented as a healthy kitty man, and he's only 10. The only reason we even caught this was because he was gonna go in for some dental work and they needed to do some blood work on him first to make sure that he was okay, which is, that's a thing, we caught it. We caught that he's not okay. We sent him in for the ultrasound, they shaved his little kitty belly, which I'm not gonna show you because he's happy with me right now, and if I keep, well, I guess I am. So there you go, look at that little shorn Loki. He's like, fuck you, dude, put me down. Okay, sorry, buddy. You gonna settle down? You mad at me forever? No, he's not mad at me. Good boy, I love you too. Anyway, uh, so they had to give him a cat ultrasound and the results of the ultrasound were not good. He had pretty severe damage to both of his kidneys. And one of his kidneys has a really big mass on it that is blocking some of the major vessels that flush the stuff out of your system. The doctor doesn't know for sure what it is, but it's likely cancer. We're not sure though. It could be something else. But we're not gonna go in and biopsy him because even if we found out it was something like cancer, we would have to put him in chemotherapy. And even if that stopped the cancer, it would be miserable for him. And the damage to his kidneys is so severe, it's not like it's gonna get better. So. Rather than do that, we're just gonna keep him comfortable and happy for as long as we can. How long that's gonna be, we don't know. We're gonna do blood work on him before we move to see how things are going. We've got him, we're swapping him over to the new kidney-friendly diet. It's been a bit of a process since A, um, his appetite's not great to begin with right now, and B, uh, we can't feed Lucy the same food as Loki because Lucy is only two and he's a, he's not even two yet. He's almost two. He's a growing cat and needs the protein and Loki can't have 
a lot of protein at all. So we're sort of mixing both foods together and just, we were out of town for the Denver trip. So it was easier to just have our friend mix both foods and let them both eat the dry foods and then try to feed Loki the wet food every night and put his medication in. He's on blood pressure medication because his blood pressure has also gone up. I have a cat hair or something by my nose. Oh my God. He's on the same blood pressure medication I am now, amlodipine, but his is a much lower dosage. So we're crushing it up and hiding it in his food. And then we also have to start giving him subcutaneous fluids. Now, if you, God damn it. If you follow me on Instagram, I've been talking about this because the fluid situation has been a situation. So on Friday, we went in to get him after his ultrasound. He had been at the vet for probably about four hours because they had to sedate him. He's not a fan of being manhandled. He is a lovey cat, but he gets very anxious when he gets manhandled. So they sedated him and they had to stay there until he was like safe enough to leave. So we went in there and actually got to go in because we needed to get a tutorial on how to administer subcutaneous fluids to a cat. So this is not something they do for humans. It wouldn't work for us. But cats and other animals, I think dogs as well, have loose skin and there's some space in between the skin and the muscle. And so what you do is you give him an IV of just like a, it's like a, a saline solution. It's like fluids, just water. And you administer, I'm not gonna do it to you right now. I'm starting messing with him. And he's like, fuck, is she gonna do it? No, I'm not gonna do it to you, buddy. I love you too much. Tomorrow though, it's another story. Sorry, dude. He's gonna leave me now. He's like, fuck you, dude. So you have to take a pretty big needle and you have to hold, you can watch videos on it. Believe me, I watch plenty of videos on it. You pull his back skin up into like a little tent and you slide this big needle in and then you have an IV and you open it up and you administer however many fluids the, the vet tells you to. And it goes under his skin, makes him kind of look like Quasimodo, gives him a little hunchback because it's like this like bulb of fluid, but then it absorbs into him. And that helps him stay hydrated, which will help him be more comfortable. And it will help hopefully with his appetite a little bit and everything. And we finally did it yesterday. And well, I'll explain. So Friday we went in for the tutorial, but we couldn't do it with the, the technician because Loki was so high off of the meds. The two meds they gave him to sedate him during the, the ultrasound, one of them is fast acting and one of them is it, and you, together they sedate the cat. But one, the faster one wore off and the one that was left caused him to be super goofy and lovey and kind of hilarious, but he was way too active to try and get him to sit still to do it. So she sent us home with the stuff and made an appointment for Wednesday to have us come back in if we couldn't figure it out. So he's only getting them two or three times a week right now. Some cats have to get them every day. We are not there yet. We decided we would try and give them to him Saturday because then we were going to be gone for three days and our friend was going to be feeding him, giving him his meds and keeping an eye on him. And then when we came back on Wednesday, we would either give it to him again, or if it hadn't worked, we would take him in for the appointment. They also prescribed us gabapentin for cats, which is, I've taken it for nerve pain, but it for cats can work as an anti-anxiety med and a kind of a sedative. It's the same medication they're going to give us for the cats when we drive to kind of calm him down before we try doing this for him. And oh boy, was he stoned. So Saturday didn't work. And then we went to Denver and it's been kind of hit or miss getting him to get the meds into him. But it's happened more, we're at least above 50% with attempts of getting the blood pressure meds into him. And so we came back and we decided to go to the vet and get the second attempt at a tutorial. And this time we gave him the gabapentin. We wait a couple hours ahead of time. So he was very mellow and we successfully did it. We had to try twice. We tried the first time, got about half of it in, and then he squirreled away. We tried again, and this time Jesse did it instead of the tech, and it worked. And then for the rest of the night, he was pretty stoned. And then this morning when we woke up, he was so perky. So maybe it was coming off the stoniness, maybe it was the fluids. He was in a great mood. He ate more than he had eaten in a while. I mean, now he's like sleepy, but it's his sleepy time. Midday is when he naps. So it obviously made him feel better. Our vet said that if we can manage to slow down the rate of his function and keep him like comfortable, if he's obviously not feeling like absolute crap, that we can take him with us to Denver, administer the fluids in the hotel and on the drives, sedate him when we need to, continue giving him blood pressure meds. And then when we get to Denver and our new vet, get him checked again and basically just keep him comfortable for as long as we have him. His kidney function has dropped 
significantly again and he's not in a great place like by the end of this month if he's in a really rough place she said that it may be kinder to to um to put him to sleep before we travel and not put him through the the um stress of the move jesse and i are both very positive and our tech on wednesday yesterday was also in like she knows this cat she's been seeing him since we started bringing him in four years ago like we're all feeling pretty good that we can keep him in a good place where he'll be okay with the ride he'll not be hateful and he'll be able to have what months he has left with us in as much comfort as possible because right now aside from the appetite and the slightly lower energy he does not seem like he is we would not have known he was sick. So our hope is that with doing all of the things that are recommended, that we can keep him with us for as long as he is able to be with us where it is good for him. We, we're not selfish enough to keep him around because we love him if he's in misery, but he doesn't seem to be in misery right now. He's been chatty and happy, even before the fluids, he's been chatty and happy. But after the fluids, he was like, fuck yeah, dude. My uncle, had a cat who was in kidney failure and administered fluids for 18 months. I'm not expecting that from the way his kidney function is decreasing. I also have low kidney function. I know what it feels like. And I am aware that at the rate he's decreasing, he is going to feel shitty pretty quickly. However, my uncle did say that he not only knew that the fluids were helping his cat feel better, he also could tell when they had stopped being as effective and things were getting towards the end. We don't feel like we are at the end right now for his sake. We want to be good pet parents, be a good steward of this kitty and keep him around for as long as it's best for him. But we also don't want to jump the gun and put him down as a matter of inconvenience like some people on YouTube recently who I have not watched, but I've seen that's a whole different story. <laughs> we want to make sure that he is comfortable and happy and living the best kitty life he can be living with us and then when that best kitty life has run its course, then we'll make a decision. So that's the update on Loki. It's, we have to talk to the kids about it. By the time you see this video, the kids will know. But they're at their dad's right now as I'm filming this. And I don't want to give this kind of news to them over the phone. But I want them to understand the gravity of things so that if something does continue to go south with him, that they aren't surprised. I spent a lot of Friday sobbing because I just, I didn't know what to do. And Lulu has been very on edge, both because of all the stuff we're doing for the move, but also because Loki is his person <laughs> and he can tell that Loki's not feeling good. And he has been very gentle with him and like not been pouncing on him. But I can tell that Lucy is extremely on edge. Loki's the kind of cat where he'll come and snuggle me when he's on edge. Lucy's the kind of cat where he's like, don't fucking touch me when he's on edge. So we haven't quite figured out how to comfort Lucy yet. I would just appreciate any advice you have if you've had to give subcutaneous fluids to a cat because we're still not great at it, but we have an ongoing appointment with our vet to come in and have them help us if we can't figure it out. Like I said, we're only doing it a couple times a week, so it's not like we'd have to bring him in every day because that would really suck. He does not, he loves the vet. He loves the people there. He loves going there. He hates the car. And so that's the thing we're gonna try and work on between now and then anyway, is helping him get a little bit more used to the car so that when we go on the drive, he's not gonna be as miserable, even though we have discovered that the sedative works very well on him. I appreciate you guys listening to me and how kind of janky this video is, but I just need to give you a couple updates. I meant to vlog while we were in Denver, but it was such a weird experience being so excited for the house and so stressed out about Loki. It's basically like we have this amazing thing happening and then this completely upsetting thing happening at the same time. I already thought there was a certain amount of bittersweetness because there's gonna be a big change for my kids with their custody. And that's a whole nother conversation that we will have later. Just, I keep saying that, but just believe me when I say that conversation will happen, but it won't happen for a while because there are too many moving parts that are out of my control before I can have that conversation. But I will say that having a very, very upsetting and kind of sad situation on one hand and a very exciting and amazing situation on the other hand at the same time, it's no wonder I feel like shit. 
Like that's, I was gonna go get my blood work done today. I'm still dehydrated from the trip. Last night, I wound up having to double up on my painkiller meds because my kidneys were hurting so much. I have been puffy and swollen since we got back, which might be partly the altitude, but like I'm a physical wreck right now and I need to get my blood work done for a kidney appointment next week. And I have learned that if you get a blood work done, for your kidney function when you're dehydrated, it can drastically skew it downwards. And that's the last thing I need right now is for a drastically skewed downwards kidney function. I need it to be accurate. So I'm gonna hydrate or dehydrate as my kids would say, and and get ready, get ready to pack and moving sail and all that. But I promise these vlogs will be more vlog-like. Okay, maybe I shouldn't promise. I aspire that these vlogs will be more vlog-like. In the meantime, like I said, give me advice if you have it seeing your pets, subcutaneous fluids. And if you don't, then just let me know something happy that has happened for you recently, because I could use some good news right now. I have some good news, but I also need some other good news to help counterbalance this orange man and such. Anyway, I think you guys are great. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching all the things. Peace out.